UConn is, is really tough to guard. They do an amazing job. And their style is very unique because they have a lot of off-ball screening. Um, they move really well and they have the personnel that really fits that style. This is a play from UConn's top five matchup against Marquette. It starts out with Alex Caravan faking like he's setting a ball screen and then popping towards the top of the key. Caravan then hands the ball off to Hassan Diara, who gets another screen from Donovan Klingon. But the real purpose of the play is Tristan Newton cutting back door. Notice how Cam Spencer is lifting as the cut occurs, distracting these three Marquette defenders from helping on the back door. When the Fox broadcast showed a replay, listen to what their color commentator, Donnie Marshall, said. And this is just basketball players doing what they do. That's not a drawn up play. It's not a Princeton style, you cut back door. This is one player reading a teammate. After two seasons now, they have been on a string, Diara and Newton. Marshall claimed that it wasn't a drawn up play, it was improvisation. But he's wrong and I can prove it. A couple weeks earlier against Providence, the Huskies ran the same exact set again for a Newton backdoor. It's one of many intricate sets Dan Hurley uses to create easy baskets on the offensive end. Donnie Marshall claiming that the play was improvised is actually a compliment. Some of UConn's sets are so elaborate, it feels like they must be improvising, only for them to then run the same exact sequence of actions later in the game. The play you're watching now is a great example of that. The first time I saw it, I really didn't think it was a set play, but it is. With all of the action in the play taking about 15 or 16 seconds for the Huskies to run, which is much longer than a typical college basketball set. This is a list of the most efficient offenses in the country this season by raw points per possession. The column all the way to the right is the average possession length for each team. In other words, the average UConn possession lasts 18.6 seconds. That's a full four seconds longer than Alabama. It's not that the Huskies don't play with pace. They push the ball in transition and run their half court offense at a high speed. However, the reason and they have the slowest possession length of anyone on the list is their intricate sets. All that action takes time to develop. If you like X's and O's, this is the video for you. I'll be walking you through all of Dan Hurley's favorite set plays and showing you how UConn runs some of the most complex offense in the country. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already and let's watch some basketball. The natural place to start when it comes to the UConn offense is their chin series. A chin screen is a back screen for a player to cut from the weak side slot to the basket. Here it's Spencer receiving the chin screen and hitting the shot. However, that's the only time this season where I found the Huskies actually scoring off of that screen. Instead, they used the chin to set up subsequent action. Here, that subsequent action is zoom for Newton. On this play, UConn sets up the zoom again, but Caravan slips the screen and gets a layup. The Huskies also use Chin to set up a flex screen. Here, UNC is switching off-ball screens, causing Cormac Ryan to end up on the high side of Spencer after the flex. So Spencer cuts to the basket. And on this play, Kansas does the same thing, but this time when Spencer cuts, both KU defenders go to him, allowing Caravan a wide open three. The flex screen is very common throughout UConn's offense, not just when they're running the chin series. After they set the flex, they pin down for screen the screener action. Here it's Newton nailing the three off the pin down. And on this play, both Gonzaga players go with Newton, leaving Caravan wide open. Defensive breakdowns are very common against the Huskies. The next action UConn uses after the chin is a stagger screen. 
Here Spencer is receiving the stagger, but the play is actually designed for him to curl the screen and Caravan to then run up towards the top of the key. Watch on this one how Stefan Castle essentially sets a screen on Caravan's man when he curls. A great example of Yukon screening just wearing down the opponent. Now we can really start to see the power of Yukon's off-ball movement. If Caravan isn't immediately open after the stagger screen, he can hand the ball back to his teammate and then start the stagger all over again on the other side of the court. It's this type of continuous motion that makes the Huskies so hard to guard. The last option out of the Chin series is a Spain ball screen. The play starts out with another stagger screen, but this time either Donovan Klingon or Samson Johnson sets a ball screen and then receives a back screen, with that center looking to roll to the rim for a potential lob. Speaking of Klingon, Yukon's favorite set play for the big fella starts out in a box formation. Klingon sets a pin down in the restricted area for a guard and then ducks in his man looking to create an angle for an easy high-low pass. It's a tough play to defend given Klingon's size and frame at 7'2", 280 pounds. He's also very good as a roller and finisher around the hoop. Watch how he catches this ball beyond the elbow, and yet it takes him just one dribble to spin move and then use his length to stretch all the way to the basket. Dan Hurley's favorite play for Cam Spencer starts out with an empty side ball screen. As that's occurring, Klingon sets two pin downs in a row on the weak side. One for Newton and then one for Spencer, with Spencer getting wide open from three off of that pin down. On this version of the play, Spencer curls the pin down, using it to get all the way to the basket when DePaul tries to chase him off the screen. As the season has progressed, UConn has changed this set to now feature three pin downs instead of two. Watch how Spencer comes off the pin down not once, but twice, wearing his defender down by running him in circles. Spencer is a ridiculously efficient offensive player. He leads the country in offensive rating and is shooting 45% from three and 56% from two. An underrated part of his game is how crafty he is inside the arc. He plays below the rim, but he uses pump fakes and one-legged Dirk fadeaways to trick his defender. This is a typical Spencer play. He pump fakes to get the defender on his back, then slowly dribbles into the paint at his own pace, keeping the defender on his back, and calmly scooping up a below-the-rim finish. Next up is the Stagger series. The play starts out with a stagger on one side of the court. Spencer then goes into a ball screen, but it's really designed for him to again receive another screen out of wide action. Here it is again, this time for Caravan. A stagger screen into a ball screen into a wide screen. Like almost all of Yukon's sets, the Stagger series has a counter. Instead of using the wide screen, Spencer can reject it and set a flex screen. Here he does that and then receives a pin down for a three. These counters and variations make it extremely difficult to scout the Huskies. It's just hard to predict what's coming next. On this play, they're setting up the stagger, but Spencer rejects it from the very beginning and goes and sets a rip screen for Caravan. The play works for a couple of reasons. First, notice how Caravan has his hand raised. He's pretending like he's going to set a screen for Castle. Also, notice how the Seton Hall defender is totally hugged up on Spencer. He's so worried about staying attached to the shooter he's not going to give any help on the rip screen for Caravan. Speaking of Caravan, he is in my opinion one of the most underrated players in the country. I'm also not sure I've seen a better cutter than him this season. Hurley uses Caravan's cutting abilities within their set plays, but Caravan is also a great improviser. Watch how his man goes and helps on the short roll here, so Caravan reads the situation and cuts to the hoop. And here is man double team the post, again triggering a great baseline cut. The sophomore forward also has extremely deep three-point range, and this season he's even played some small ball five. 
that's partially because Klingon missed time with an injury. But when Caravan is at the five, he's a matchup nightmare for any slow footed big that is now forced to guard him on the perimeter. It's not necessarily Yukon's best defensive lineup with Caravan at the five, but it is a very powerful offensive lineup for the Huskies. The final play we're going to look at has been used more by UConn later in the season, the corner skip. The set starts out in the horns formation by setting a ball screen and then flaring out towards the weak side corner. When the ball gets skipped to the five man, Solomon Ball runs towards it for a dribble handoff. Here they're running the play for Newton and he uses the handoff to attack the paint. On this play, Klingon fakes the initial handoff because the play is actually designed to get Newton running all the way from the opposite corner towards Klingon. One of my favorite parts of the Yukon offense is when they run an extreme amount of off ball screening and cutting, slowly wear the defense down, and then seemingly out of nowhere, Klingon just emerges under the basket for a wide open dunk. Theoretically, it should be hard to lose track of the seven foot two guy, but all that off ball movement just forces defenders to lose sight of their normal help responsibilities and positioning. This is the very first play of the game against Marquette and UConn screening causes the defense to break down almost right away. To wrap this up, let's look at one more play from early in the season of the cutting just completely wearing down the defense. The Huskies execute five cuts in a row, ultimately leading to a Newton three. It's just one of many, many examples of why watching UConn is basketball poetry. Thank you very much for watching. For those of you that aren't aware, I have a newsletter where I cover college basketball X's and O's and analytics every Monday. I wrote about UConn's chin series earlier this week, including a couple of sets the Huskies run that didn't make it into this video. The link to sign up is in the description and I'll see you in the next one.